as many of you already know, about a month ago I swapped out my IBM slash Lenovo T60 for a Lenovo T430. Now up to this point, I have loved everything about the T430. Um, I threw in a quad-core 8-thread i7, 8GB of DDR3, and a 120GB solid-state drive, and this thing just flies. But there is one thing I still miss from the IBM slash Lenovo T60, and that is the traditional IBM keyboard. The new island style um, slash chiclet keyboard design that Lenovo has implemented is just absolutely horrendous. You know, I watched some videos, uh, one online, one on their forums, um, and it seems like they put a lot of engineering to, into the new island style slash chiclet keyboard, but it just feels awful to type on. I, I was programming with this, uh, writing some VHDL and C++, and after about an hour, I just wanted to take my fingers and just break them backwards because it was painful, physically painful to use this keyboard to type on. Now, I am, I guess you could say a pretty abusive typer. Um, I do type uh, pretty hard. That's why I use a mechanical keyboard for most of the time. Um, but on this keyboard, you know, I just can't handle it. After an hour, uh, my fingers just start to hurt a lot. And I didn't have that problem on the T60. So today, we're going to be swapping out the island style keyboard on this T430 with a traditional uh, or more traditional um, keyboard from the Lenovo T420. That was right before they switched over to the island style keyboard. Um, the T420 had the traditional seven row keyboard and the T430 had the new island style um, six row keyboard, which is frankly not very good in my opinion. And in order to do that, as you can see, obviously I bought the T420 keyboard and I bought the T420 bezel. Now, just a quick shout out, a big thanks to uh, ThinkWiki. They had a great article on how to swap out the uh, keyboards. It should be pretty easy. I didn't even need to buy the T420 bezel. Um, you can just modify the standoffs on the T420 keyboard to fit with the T430. Um, I guess not bezel, I keep saying bezel, it's the palm rest. Um, but I didn't want to do that because I was kind of ghetto and I just wanted to make things easier for myself. So I paid the extra $15 and bought the uh, palm rest from the T420. Now, as with most of my videos like this, please keep in mind that this is not meant to be a full guide on how to actually perform this upgrade. I'm going to give you guys a couple of tips and tricks along the way. And I'm going to put a lot of resources down in the description for you guys, um, including the ThinkWiki article and the T430 full disassembly guide. Um, so those will all be down there for you if you actually want to swap out the keyboards like I am doing right now. So I'm gonna pull the battery out. And the first thing we need to do obviously is to remove the original uh, island style keyboard and the palm rest. And that's not very hard at all. Um, you know, if it was just the keyboard, that would actually make things a lot easier because I think on this model, you only need to remove two or three screws to pull the keyboard out. Um, but since we're removing the palm rest, that complicates things. We have to remove a couple more screws. Um, so it's gonna take a little bit longer. So yes, I am going to speed this footage up so you guys don't have to wait through uh, the entire disassembly process. All right, so as you guys can see, the old palm rest has been removed and now we can take the new palm rest and hopefully it should be an exact fit because that's what it said on ThinkWiki. So I'm gonna pull this old palm rest off. And if you guys were watching closely, you guys uh, saw that I made a couple mistakes. There were a couple of screws I forgot to remove and I had to look around for them and eventually uh, found all the screws and got that bezel and keyboard out of there. So I should be able to slide this in like so. So I struggled for a good five minutes before I figured out what was going on uh, because the T420 palm rest would not fit on the T430. Um, and the reason why was because, as you can see, there's a plastic tab right here and the plastic tab on the T420 palm rest was much longer than the plastic tab on the T430 palm rest. So what I did um, was I grabbed a drill and a pair of wire cutters, which I have misplaced right here. Um, kind of ghetto mod, but it worked. Um, and I took the drill, I made uh, two holes right here as sort of a guide. And then I just grabbed my wire cutters and uh, cut this section off. I cut out, I cut off probably about, I would say one fifth of an inch um, off that. And now it fits just fine, as you can see now. Hopefully I don't embarrass myself again. There we go. And if I push down, it should just lock into place. 
I'm sorta happy right now, and I'm sorta disappointed. I'm happy because as you guys can see, I was able to successfully install the T420 keyboard on the T430, and it is working. Now, I do feel a bit disappointed because I was going about this all wrong the whole entire time. So it turns out you do not need to modify the T420 keyboard, and you do not need to buy the T420 palm rest. By the way, the T420 palm rest doesn't even fit the T430 because the standoffs are in the wrong place. So I scrapped that idea altogether and I had to go back to the drawing board and I'm glad I did because I found a much easier way to install this keyboard onto the T430. So all you have to do is you take the palm rest off, install the keyboard into the palm rest, which might sound a bit weird, but you guys will get a visual so you know what I'm talking about. Then you take the palm rest, Install the entire palm rest with the keyboard installed back into the T430, connect everything up, put the palm rest back down, uh, snap all the plastic clips back together, and then you can screw all of the screws back in and the keyboard just works. It was that easy. I didn't have to make any sort of modifications to the keyboard or the stock T430 palm rest um, and I... All I needed was the keyboard itself. It took me, um, if I had known this to begin with, it probably would have taken me 15 minutes to install this keyboard. There are a couple things you're gonna need to note while putting the T430 back together with the new keyboard installed. You're not gonna need some screws, including this one right next to the RAM. So just take that one, put it in a plastic baggie and save it for later. And then of course the two screws that actually hold the palm rest in place. Um, you're not going to need and the palm rest you know stays in place without those screws so you really don't need them um it's the two screws that are right here and right here uh, under the keyboard since we installed the uh, keyboard into the palm rest and then installed the palm rest we couldn't actually install those two screws because the keyboard was blocking the screw holes so i just omitted them all together because they're not too important and once again your t430 is going to get along just fine without them now one more thing um, and that is the fact that the back of the bezel with the new keyboard installed is raised about a millimeter to two millimeters for some odd reason. I'm not really sure why. I guess that's just the uh, way the T420 um, keyboard is built. Um, but it pushes this back section up about two millimeters. And the screen does make just, just a slight amount of contact with the palm rest now. Um, I can barely hear it, barely feel it, um, but that contact is there, so that's just something to note as well. Um, if anyone has any fixes for this, uh, please leave a comment down in the comment section. I don't really see a way around this though, and honestly, I mean, I barely notice it at all. It's not that big of a deal. So I was actually really overcomplicating this. Don't make the same mistakes I did. Do not go out and buy the T420 palm rest because you don't need it. And of course now I can't resell this because I took a drill and cut off a section of that tab. So that's pretty much useless to me right now. Um, all you're gonna need for the installation is the keyboard itself. And that is it. You don't have to make any modifications as long as you put the keyboard inside the palm rest first and then install everything back onto the laptop. Now, from here, I could go a step further and flash new firmware um, to the laptop to actually fix some key mappings. Um, right now, delete and page up are switched. Well, that's the main one that I noticed, and that is uh, really throwing me off because I like the big delete button on this keyboard to actually function as a delete button. Also, the caps lock light isn't functioning and there's a couple other uh, key binding um, issues here and um, there that's gonna take some getting used to. Now, um, as I said, there is a firmware update um, to you know, kind of fix the key mappings. And I tried to perform that. I ran into some issues and I gave up just for the moment. I'm gonna go back and take another look at it uh, and see if I can get that to actually work. Um, but right now, you know, I have a pretty much fully functional T420 keyboard installed on my T430. And just one final tip before I end this video in the ThinkWiki article, it tells you to isolate some pins on the keyboard header. I personally wouldn't bother with that. Um, it's gonna cause a short circuit condition that will pretty much take care of itself. It's non-fatal. Um, it's not gonna cause any issues. A lot of people haven't isolated uh, the pins on the keyboard header and they have reported zero issues. So if you wanna save some time, um, like, you know, I want to save some time, um, that's definitely something that you probably don't have to do.
that's going to be about it for this video, guys. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can go ahead and post a comment down in the comment section. Don't forget to drop a like on this video. If you didn't like this video, please tell me why. And of course, please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you want to support me, you can use my Amazon or eBay affiliate link. Speaking of eBay affiliate link, if you want to uh, check out where I got this brand new keyboard, the link to the keyboard will be down in the description. I think I paid about $34 for it. Keep in mind, it was a new keyboard, um, so it was a little pricey um but i really don't have any regrets with that because it feels great like this keyboard is probably uh my favorite keyboard out of all the laptops i have ever used and you know compared to this 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 does not stand a chance this is honestly um a bit pathetic thanks for watching guys don't forget to drop a like on the facebook page and i will see you guys in the next installment of a computers and technology